in the Lord of Jesus and the Lord of the Holy Ghost to your son. Father, I ever get to me because where two or three are gathered together in the name of your Lord Jesus. I will ask you that as we go into your world this morning, that you will minister life unto us. And as you speak to each and every one of us, I will pray that your happiness will be clear. And you will speak to us as individuals. Bless everyone. Thank you because you know that you have us. This morning we are considering the topic on surrender your will. Surrender your will. There is confusion in Christendom today because of the ignorance that exists among believers as to surrendering their will. We have confusion in our various campuses among members of the executive, among those who are in the group, as to what to believe and what not to believe because we are ignorant of the surrendering of our will. Your spiritual life is what it is now. As a result of our far, you have surrendered your will to God. You have victory or defeat today in your Christian life because you surrender or you don't surrender your will to God, as the case may be. Whatever you are going to be tomorrow, Whatever you are going to do for God tomorrow, whatever extent you are going to rise to in the next future, in Jesus' time, we will depend as to how far to surrender your will to God. God cannot move in your life contrary to your will. God has so created man as a free moral agent. And God respects the will of man. And you find that from the pages of the scriptures, in the use of the word peace, in the use of the word whosoever, in the use of the word whatsoever, give, take heed in the admonitions, in the warnings, and in the wings of God, that God has respect for the will of man. And God cannot force us or go beyond our will. For example, in John chapter 3, verse 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave the best gift he could ever give. He did all he could do so that man can be saved. He is the only potent one. He knows all things. 
e cardu o fim but he couldn't go beyond the will of mass after giving his son he needed to still wait for that whosoever would receive that son that by the fact that god knows the critical state anyone will be when something hell that by the fact <coughs> that god himself says he is not willing that any man should perish but that all should come to repentance yet god will not go beyond the will of man the whosoever must come to receive Jesus. And if that whosoever does not come, then God cannot do otherwise. So in our salvation from sin, it is necessary for us to surrender our will to God. If we don't surrender that will, I will keep on saying, or keep on confessing, that I know that God can forgive sin. I will still keep on committing sin. We will split hair wide open. God cannot automatically just forgive your sin without you surrendering your will. Here is say, whosoever, after all we should expect God, that this God has been so good to give us the most precious gift that he has. <coughs> then why didn't he just force it on every one of us as a robot to believe on that son? No. He couldn't do otherwise. He could not lead us as a zombie. We must surrender our will. In Matthew chapter 23, <coughs> from verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together? How often, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even at the end? Gathered as chickens on the way, and ye would not be away. There was the desire in the heart of Christ, the intention in his heart, to make sure that these people were saved in his Judean ministry. The Pharisees opposed him to the last. If he said anything, they opposed him. The rulers of the Jews came and they told him, You are the devil. He kept on talking, they said, Don't you say you are mad? He kept on saying, They said, Don't you say that you are a Samaritan? All along, in the Judean ministry, they opposed him to the last. They called him names, they never called any man. He did a miracle. Instead of them to see something good in that miracle and to glorify God of their own volition, they said he casted out devils by the prince of devils, of a dead devil. And in the heart of the Lord, all along his heart was the enemy. I want to save you people. And he told them, I am the light of the world. <laughs> he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, 
but shall receive the, the light of life. And yet, the evil kept quiet. He thought, they discussed, preached, and yet they will not surrender their will. And at this time that he was going to die, he declared what has been in his heart for a long time, and he said, Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. And then in the record of Luke, Luke said that he was weeping. He cried. He prayed the master. Oh, Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem. All along. When I walk on your street, this was the uppermost thing in my heart. I wanted to gather you together. I wanted to save you. I wanted to heal you. But you would know. You failed to surrender your will. You didn't agree with me. And I do not go beyond your will. You say you need me. God cannot go beyond your will. You say you want to be saved, and the Spirit of God convicts you, but you will not repent. God cannot go beyond your will. Pharaoh was destroyed because he failed to surrender. Nebuchadnezzar had to suffer for several seasons because he failed to surrender. Belshazzar had to receive the writing on the wall because when Daniel had already told him to repent, he failed to surrender. And so the writing of the wall came and said, Many, many take care of a sin that thou hast made and found wanting. No more hope. Your will matters in your Christian life. We have confusions in our campuses. We have arguments amongst one another because we are not surrendering our will. People look for the easy thing. They think that they got easily. Don't really laugh on the long run. Later on, they take wings and they fly away like a bird. Your will is important to God. You must surrender it if you are going to do anything for, 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 for Him. If you are going to live your Christian life, you must come to the point where to surrender your will. You must surrender your will to what you believe. Many of us say we want to get to heaven. If I'm to throw that question out, how many of us want to get to heaven? We all, we raise up our hands. But the question is, have you surrendered your will to that path, to that ambition of yours that you want to get to heaven? See, if you do, your life becomes different. You will find that you will jealousy God against that. I want to get to heaven. And you don't care. As long as your will is lost in that goal of yours, you don't care what you will suffer. You don't care what hardship you will go through. Just so that you will make heaven. You don't bother what people say about you. That's their own personal business. Others may say you are a fanatic, that's a business. But you have a goal. And because that goal is important to you, you have surrendered your will to the achieving of that goal. Think of salvation. If you find salvation very important, and you are saying, and I want to keep my salvation, 
you will find that if you mean it and you are serious about it, on the long run, your will will bend. So keep in that salvation and you'll be careful. You can't live the same way other people live who don't have the goal of keeping your salvation and in the way you have it. Others may say this one of this matter. Others may say all these ones are only going too far. You see, but that is your own personal business. So you who know what you have, you know what you want to keep, you will do all your best to make sure that you keep it. You know when the exams are near, maybe before you try to read, around 10, you take you read into the unconscious world. But at the period of examination, you are going to have two papers tomorrow. You will not finish one. You will command sleep to go away. Then, if you are to think, after the exams, why was I able to take away sleep from me? It was because you surrendered your will. To achieve it, that goal. I must prepare effectively well if I'm going to pass the paper of tomorrow. Sleep, go away. You will find that if sleep wants to come, you will try as much as possible to do the best you can do to make sure that sleep does not come. If you find that you are reading and you cannot concentrate, you leave the book, you stroll around, not strolling aimlessly, but you are strolling with a purpose, with a goal in mind, that by the time I go and come back, sleep would have gone. I will be able to get refreshed and I'll have my life myself concentrating on my book work. You'll find that if sleep wants to come, if it means sleeping on the bed floor, you will sleep. The bed will be there. You say, bed, this is my time to sleep. I want to make sure that I keep this thing and you bend your will. To achieving that goal. You surrender the will to achieving that goal and the pass the exam. And you'll find that for that night you will eat. So that shows the importance of the will in whatever you do. So this passage was read in verse 38. Behold your house is left unto you desolate. That shows the danger, the consequence that comes upon anyone who fails to surrender his will to the best good. So the most important thing <laughs> On the long run, you will find out that that individual will lose for it. And Christ told them, I have tried, but you will not. You will not surrender. Okay. Now your house is left unto you desolate. If you don't want to keep it desolate, you must need to surrender your will. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say the will again, until you will say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. If you don't say, if you don't apply your will and say, you will see me. That shows the will. Revelation chapter 22. <laughs> From verse 11. He 
thing that is unjust, let him be unjust. And he which is filled with, let him be filled with sin. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous sin. And he that is holy, let him be holy sin. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. You can't read those verses and not see again the part your will or my will plays in my Christian life or in my relationship with God. These we were unjust about the messages. We have heard that Christ says but they, of their own volition, kept their will to unjust things. Others surrendered their will to what is filled with. Others to what is righteous. Others to holiness. And Christ came and gave the conclusion. <coughs> if you say you want to be unjust, okay, you can. If you say you want to be filthy, okay, you can. If you are righteous and you feel it's important for you to keep that righteousness, okay. If you are, if you believe in holiness. And I'm going to keep to that holiness, you can. But I'm coming. When I come, I'm going to reward everyone according to his works. You know that people argue and quarrel and fight and struggle as to whether it is possible to be holy or not. We are all people in our campuses, in our churches, twist the Bible to prove their point that everyone will continue to be a sinner. Why? They fail to surrender their will mm -hmm. to the life Christ has given as to live the right. Mm -hmm. And you may be thinking Christ will force them to believe holiness, no? Say no, it. When I talk to those, okay, if this holiness is true, when I sleep tonight, God, make me to dream, speak to me that like it is true. <laughs> And God will be looking at you. He has written in the Bible. Give me that book. And said, Read. Hey, study. Obey whatever you read there. And after you have seen the light, you go and sleep and say, God should speak to you. He will be looking at you. In fact, the devil may appear as an angel of light and will tell you that it is not very necessary. Are you not born again? If you're not reading the book of life, it is very not necessary. And then you wake up, you come and say, I have a testimony to give. All I have to say, I have a message from the Lord. I have the gift of the word of knowledge. I understand all mysteries. And the president says, okay, let's listen to God's message. And then, with the nineteen gay voice, 
but I know that God is good. We are living in the New Testament age where we have spiritual gifts. And I thank God because the Spirit of God is working in our midst. Yesterday after that argument, as to whether to be holy or not to be holy, I prayed and talked to God. And I said, God, show me by the word of knowledge or by the gift of the Spirit and convince me beyond all reasonable doubt whether holiness is necessary or not. And after I prayed, I slept. And God manifested that gift of the word of knowledge through a dream. Use the dream as a channel and yes, the message. God said, once you are born again as all, your name is in the book of life, it's not necessary. And you think that God will shout from heaven, keep your mouth of no. I'm looking at you. The fools who are the testimony and who follow after you is looking at them. And among those who hear you and believe you will come and meet those who believe it. And say, I know you people don't believe in spiritual things. Don't you hear that? The word of knowledge. I see the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, doesn't seem to write the way he has in his hands. How did Moses know what happened? He knew what happened in Genesis chapter 1. If there was no manifestation of spiritual things. How did John know what happened in heaven, in Revelation? If there was no manifestation too of spiritual things. And so we get confused and we confuse ourselves. Why? Because of the will. I'm going to say something. The will, or to surrender the will, used to be the most difficult thing to do. There are people who find it difficult to surrender their will. Even in relationship one with another. There are people who have brought themselves to the point wherein they say, No man can teach me. When you tell them, like maybe ladies can prosper, tell them that a uh, brother who to attend SCMC looks at you. <laughs> and they say uh, you don't understand the Bible. <laughs> but the anointing we have received shall teach you all things. <laughs> the anointing. I have that anointing. I'm prepared in the Holy Ghost. Therefore, all these ones are saying, well, those who are teaching, who taught them? That's what they are so so and so. You know, mathematics is rent. Where did you learn all those things? We have the anointing. You go. When you go, you come back, you will meet me here. After you come, I revise your course with you, and I teach you, and set you in order. Because I have the anointing. And we told God that the Christ who gave the promise of the Holy Spirit baptism was no more in Ephesians chapter 4 that in the church there are apostles, teachers, evangelists, prophets, and so on. For the perfecting of the saints, 
for the work of the ministry that we all may come together into the fullness and stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be no more children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Among pastors, among preachers, among ministers, to surrender the will to one another, to be taught by one another, looks difficult because to them, once you become a pastor, you will know it all. <laughs> and that's why many go into false doctrine. Get confused. And not live right. And we are still on the long run. In verse 17 of that same chapter Revelation, and the spirit and the bride say, God. Why was it not automatic? Because of the wind. And let him that hear it say, God. Why should he that hear it say, God? Because he must apply his wind. And let him that is at that come. And who so ever will let him take the water of life free. Who so ever will God can force you against the will. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 23 from verse 26. <coughs> My son, <coughs> give me thy heart. My son, <coughs> give me thy heart. <coughs> and let thine eyes observe my way. As a father, you would have thought you should have automatically said, My son, your heart belongs to me. Said, No, my son, give me thine heart. You think if your heart automatically belongs to God, you will have evil thoughts, you would have thought the Lord all those things. You think you have to trouble you, know. Big anger will be there, no? If it automatically belongs to him, it will afford everything immediately. But because you must do something. Before he can do the forging, he said, My son, give me thine heart. You may say, I belong to Jesus. Jesus has my own life. God sits down, he'll be looking at that, you'll be laughing. You don't know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And he'll be repeating, my daughter, give me thine heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When he tells you to do something and there seems to be a conflict, right within your heart, whether to obey or not, he will be repeating, my son, give me thine heart. It can't go beyond your will. You can pray and say you are sanctified, we're looking at you. You can pray and say, Jesus is my righteousness, we're looking at you. And say, Jesus is my, sanctifi is my sanctification. Jesus is my baptizer and the Holy Ghost. And you go into positive confession, we're looking at you. I will still be repeating, my son, my son, give me thy heart. A sinner who has known that Jesus died for the world may stay there and be saying, Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Savior. 
I'm born to be saved. Repent. Repent. He may go into a positive confession. He may bring himself to a position where he feels, I am born again. And yet the father will be saying, Repent. Your will, you must surrender to the point of repentance. And so he says, My son, give me thine heart. That shows the place of the will. If the will is not important, to what extent God will go with you? God will not be saying, My son, give me thine heart. In Joshua chapter 23. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside there, therefore, therefore to the right and or to the left. We have to encourage them to read the law. After they have read, you need to keep it and to do all that is written in the book of the law. And he told them if they do, then they will not turn aside. There is no eternal security. If they neglect any encouragement, if they refuse to surrender their will, to bend down to read the Bible, obey what is dead, they will backslide and they will go from the faith and it's still why they will be down at that condition. But don't talk to all them. Be courageous. Temptations will come. Trials will come. Problems may come. You may not have money to eat, but be ye courageous. There may be battle all around. Be ye courageous. And make sure that you keep and do all that the law commands. If not, you will turn aside. The next somebody stay there and be saying, Jesus is my knowledge. He is my wisdom. When I ask Jesus, I know all things. And he won't bend down to me. So I have this quiet time to pray. He will pass life. He will go back to sin. He will turn aside. The psalmist said, Thy words. Have I eaten in my heart? He had to do it himself. Because <coughs> God will put it there automatically. Before he could hide those, those words in his heart, so we need to find out where the book is. Open, read. He would need to meditate. He would need to try to cram or memorize so that those words will sink deep into the heart. And with the help of God and the help of the Spirit, he would have understanding and he hides those words in his heart. He said, Thy words abide his will. Keep it in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. Verse 7 That he come not among these nations. So he was warning them. What will keep them from backsliding? What will not make them to go among the nations that God has warned them of? And he said, you read the world. But they have their free will to go or not to go. 
God can force them. And you go later on the way. At least marriage is with them. And God destroyed them. You are willing. That you come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. If God had it known that these people can still serve idols, that although they are not worshipping God, but just one knew their will, that they could turn their will any moment, to serve the devil, that was why Joshua was warning them. If it was something automatic, it wouldn't have been necessary. So the will is important. In verse 11, he said, take good heed. Be careful. That has to do with the will. Therefore, unto yourselves. But somebody will say, but did you know God who keeps us? Yes. God keeps us, but he himself said, avoid. He himself said, take heed. He himself said, beware. How are we? He cannot keep us where we don't want him to keep us. Where we don't cooperate with him and do what he wants us to do. In line with that thing we want him to do for us, to be looking at us. There's nothing we can do. Our will is important. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. They were to make sure they are careful to love God. You know, many of us are not careful. Do not say I'm a Christian. I love God, but we are not zealous about guiding that law. We are not zealous to make sure that that law never diminishes. That's why we become careless, we become a talkative, we become careless, we become prayerless. Don't study the word and so on until one now goes back to sin. <laughs> but God says, take good heed. Your will is important. In chapter 24 of the same book, verse 15. And if, if we read from verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. We have to tell them. They must surrender their will to fear God. And serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away, God won't put that on away from them. They themselves you need to put away the God which your father served on the other side of the floor. You know, when God says that if you marry more than one wife, you are committing adultery. Mm -hmm. Have you seen God go to the house and say, you woman, go away? Mm -hmm. The man himself mm -hmm. must apply his will and do what God wants him to do. God can force you. But he will reveal to you what you will have if you obey, what you will have if you don't obey. In fact, in the book of Isaiah, it says, If ye be willing, ye shall eat the fruit of the land. Your will. So yeah, go to our to them now in verse 16, and if it seems evil unto you, so serve the Lord. If it seems evil, it's possible. 
not the most mosif good to serve God. You can see it evil to serve God. You can see it evil to be all and all and out and out for God. Depends upon you how, how you see it. And how you see it depends on where you put your will. But if it's evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day who you will serve. Choice. You have to make a choice. And in the making of choice, there is the will. <laughs> These were Israelites. These were people who saw miracles. These were people who saw Jericho fell flat. These were people who had the law. If you pray, I would answer you. I will make sure that my ability is available. I will make sure you get everything you want. But if you continue, it all still depends upon you. Then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know. We can only know if we continue. Our will is there. And it is only then we can have freedom. Through all these passages we have looked to, we have tried to see the place of the will. In whatever you want to get from God, to whatever I want to get to in your Christian experience, your will is important. Then, where you use your will to matters. <laughs> where you yield your will to matters. And there are many things that wants to gain your attention. There are many things that wants to gain your will. You'll be going on the main road. The advertisers want to gain your attention for only one purpose to affect your will. You'll find on advertising boards, they may draw a lady there, well dressed, or in another case, naked. You may be having your Bible right in the box, wanting to read. And right as you get there, the advertiser says, Look here. Then you have to surrender your will to walk. Do I keep going reading? Or do I look? Eventually, the advertisers will win you. By you hearing a suggestion, you may be a naked woman. And a suggestion comes to you, maybe already the Spirit of God says, Don't look, be careful, control your eyes. Another one comes and says, Look at it so that you will know how to preach. To people. <laughs> and then, you say, I will look. Again, you have gained your attention. And for only one purpose, to affect your will, to buy the goods she is, she is trying to advertise. It may be though the Toma Pet. You find the well dressed lady there. And then after looking, you see the stew right on the board, just picture. Even though there's much pepper in the soup, you don't know. 
Where the soup is bitter, you don't know. You only know if it's red. And it looks and it appeals to you. And this tomato must be good. It's caught your attention. You are now affecting your will. You put your money inside your pocket. You go to buy the tomato. They've succeeded. You only come back home and say, so this thing is not good. It's too late. So there are many things in the physical world that wants to gain our will. And in trying to gain our will, they try to affect us through many things that happen. So that eventually they may get us and get our will. And once your will is caught, you are gone. The one who controls your will directs your whole life. You know, there are ladies or some sisters who should have been here now. Maybe you talk to them in your campus. They are in coaching. You talk to them and say, yes, I love that thing. In fact, I want to know the Bible. But my chance. Yes. This holiday period is not just the Then you yourself wonder, can't you take a decision? No. He controls my will. Sister. Be careful, the courtship period is dangerous. Why are you so close to brother so so and so? You know you are going to get married. Be very careful. Why walk with him at all times? Why stay alone with him in the room? Don't you know danger can come? The sister says I know. I know danger can come, but if my head have lost my will. Until you commit fornication and go to hell. So everyone wants to get the will. The church pastor wants to gain the will of his church member so that he can dictate where to go and where not to go. And in trying to gain that will, he can decide not to pray for that person's child. He can decide not to wed them, the one to marry. Because we'll say, you are going to fellowship so, so, and so. If you want me to marry you, you must be a full member here. Where is he going? The will. In trying to get that will, he's using physical things now to affect the will. And so everyone wants to get the will. You know the devil also wants to get the will of man. He looks for opportunity. The devil. He will look for means. Bring temptation. He will bring trouble. And in those moments, he will want to shake your faith and say, will you keep on believing the Lord? You know, the devil wanted to get the will of Job. How will he do it? <coughs> Fire came from heaven, destroyed all that he had. His children were in their brother's house having, having uh, enjoyment. The devil sent wind, the wind. Blew that house, the house collapsed, the old children died. Later, he said his Sabians, they, they destroyed his property. And then his old servants, systematically, one after the other, to be narrating, narrating what has happened in the different locations. As one is going away, one is coming. Same job is what happened. 
رفت در جوبر شیر بیسته باو داو ان باشید گاد 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 سویش ان ایسید گاد گی گاد از تکی Therefore, was defeated. Although it showed, it showed that he was wrong. It was the devil who took away, not God. Later on, the devil appeared before God, and God said, "I will see my servant Job. We tried him; it will bring it." Ah, uh, Job said, "A man will give everything he has for his life." You allow me to touch his fly. Want to get the wheel? I said, God said, okay, but we don't kill him, don't destroy him. He came, struck Job with words, and Job still watched his God. And then he sent the wife. The wife came and said. Cause God and die. She was the only one remaining. She could have been a source of encouragement at that time, but she came and said, "Are you still doing your integrity? Come on, cause God and die." Was the devil using me? And you said, "Ah, uh-uh. why are you behaving like a foolish woman?" You go back here. The friends came and they bulldozed Job with words. Job argued and argued until he came and told them, "Ye are physicians, doctors of no value. You are forgers of lies." And he told them that he didn't want to listen to them again. That he wants to listen to God. That it is God he wants to talk to. Who was inspiring all those friends? The devil. And what was he looking for? He wants to gain the will of you. He does that by oppression. And if you allow that to continue, can obsess you. From obsession, he possesses you. He has got a will. At that point, he can tell you to do whatever he wants him to do. He wants you to do. Then yourself. That's another that major one again. Wants to gain the will. <laughs> Sir, wants the wheel, and that self appeals to you. You want to take a stand for God's mercy. What will the mommy say? <laughs> if on so so and so, who said that during this summer? We need to spend our summer in London. Yes, that you want to go to LCMC. What will aunt feel? They don't you think you will enjoy summer better in London? You remember Buckingham Palace? You need to see that. You know when Aunt came last time, he talked and talked about how beautiful that palace was. This is your opportunity to go to London. Don't miss it. And then brother comes and says, "Sister, would you come pray for me? Uh, I have two things." After it, so the next day it will come. This one I'm not sure again. 
So I'm thinking that um, God will be leading me to spend this summer in London. And then the will surrender to self. Even when God is speaking to you, you know you will do. You know you've been at school all these months, you know the exam period. You know you needed to stay and read the Bible, study and pray and have fellowship with me. You don't know where I'm leading you to. Don't you think that you're being educated physically is for nonsense? I want to use it too, but you must know my word too. God, when I come back. <laughs> what can't I read it to myself? In London, I receive books. Who told you to receive books in London? So after we go all like that, all like that, we now surrender to sin. Step one, cut the wheel. And God keeps on looking, suffering silently. <laughs> and he's saying, my son, give me thy hand. I want that way. Give it to me. Then maybe it comes to you want to marry. At what chief, when self was silent, he said, go there, to me, my marriage will be simple. I'm going to do it so that I will help other people. So that they will know that it doesn't matter. I'm doing it simply. I keep the standard. I obey God. And that time, self is silent. A day to marriage, brother says, sister, do we still keep standard? Then your mind travels. Unbelievers are coming. Would I blaspheme the name of Christ if we do it simple like simply like this? Ah, Professor so so and so is coming, we invited you. Don't do don't do the thing that I have yet shall be. If I don't follow the custom of the hour, self keeps on talking. <coughs> there is a brother who will be praying about you. A day to go. And then your friends come. Please, look, don't behave anyhow here. It's once and for all. You must do it. Where? <laughs> Thank you, sister. Let's consider it again. Consider what? Look, we are your friends. We'll stand by. If you don't do it, we won't come. Can't become a shame to us. In fact, what we say, look, this one I've bought for this special occasion. And then they have to encourage self. And then you stay. Food becomes difficult to eat. They're almost drying. Now you are too much an idea. Jesus, help me, help me, your will. They can't help you beyond your will. And then self stops. Okay, I will change the color. What self says, not make it as long, but use the same color. 
the popular color we all use in the world. Until you come to a point you can no longer resist. And then the brother says, I'm still standing. What we agree, sister says, you can do whatever you want to. I've made up my mind. I bow down to self. Now I'll come out like we normally do. The brother says, What? I can't see if you don't. I'm married. Shall we disappoint these people? And let's disappoint them. This, as for me, this is what I'm going to put on. Come for me. The brother pleads, sister. You know, when we are in the campus, as a Bible study secretary, I told this thing. I told them that we should be, you know. I told them that it's not necessary that there are better things we can use money for. Sister, please, I beg. Let's keep to this world. Can you keep it on your own? <laughs> After I didn't preach it to you. Didn't preach it with you. You do your eyes, do my own. In fact, what do you want to wear? And this, no, I won't come out. <laughs> this is my only chance. You must make it gain. On the eventually, both of you surrender to self. And after you finish everything, when self is now silent, you say, is it just for three hours something that I spoiled everything now? Just three hours marriage. All my consecration of five years, six years Christianity, bow down to self. Self is powerful. And it seeks the will. That was why Christ said, if any man come after me and deny not himself, cannot be my disciple. Cannot. Christ recognizes the power of self. That self could be stubborn. You know, when Jesus Christ during uh, just the night before the Passover, the night of the Passover before he was going to die. <laughs> He wanted to wash the disciples' feet. As he was washing, Peter said, uh, uh, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? He appeared on me. And then the Lord said, What I'm doing, you don't know. After I finish, you will know. Peter said, Thou shalt never. He gave his Lord commandment. <laughs> Thou shalt never wash my feet. And he told him, Lord, sir. Christ told him, if I don't, you are no part of me. Then he learned the lesson. We thank God, he learned it before he died. Because church history tells us that he was crucified on the cross like Jesus. And that when they wanted to raise him up like a rich Jesus, he told them to turn the cross upside, the cross upside down, that he is not worthy to, to die the way his master died. He learned it. His will has been got by God. 
God on the other end says, my son, give me thine heart. The devil is then seeking for the will. Self is then saying, I can't surrender my will. And God is just saying, remember I bought you with the blood of Jesus. Really, you are no longer your own. Really, I paid the price and that was the blood of my son. Really, by right, legally, you belong to me. But I want you to surrender with me. My son, give me that heart. So God wants you to surrender your will to him. And you know in the Lord's Prayer, or what you generally call the Lord's Prayer, Christ prayed and said we should pray, thy will, God's will, be done. When God wants your will, he's saying, surrender your will to my own will. That my own will will have the overruling effect. Your own personal will is to bow down to my will. And God will not bow down to, to, to any one of us. That's certain. God says, surrender your will. You know when Saul, who is called Paul, the apostle, as a sinner, he was fighting against the will of God. He kept on fighting and fighting. And on the way to Damascus, Christ met him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? It is hard. It is hard for thee to speak against the priest. The priest is something like a javelin. So kicking against the tip of it, Jesus told him it is hard. That he, Jesus, cannot bow down to his own will. To the will of Saul. That Saul, you must bow. And then Saul surrendered and said, Lord, what will thou me do? <coughs> Before then he said, Who are thou, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus. The same Jesus that persecuted him. That guy did not change his name for him so, so that he would believe. <laughs> and he said, Lord, what will thou have me do? God wants us to surrender our will. Jesus, our perfect example, surrendered his will to the will of the Father. In some forty. <laughs> From verse 6. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears as thou opened. Bond offering and sin offering as thou not required. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight. I delight to do thy will. O oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness. 
and thy fruit from the great congregation. I delight to do thy will. His will has been surrendered. The surrender to him. And that's what where God said we should get to. Surrender your will in God. Until you will be able to say, Father, I delight to do thy will. It is the joy of my heart, the joy of my soul, that my will is lost in thine. And what concerns me now is just to do thy will. That was Jesus. He said, I delight. The book of Hebrews confirms it. This year it was a prophecy. And it was fulfilled in Christ in the book of Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 to 7, you'll find them there. Surrendering himself to the will of the Father. But it is good when Ronaldo surrendered himself now. Christ is God. He coexisted with God. He has the same essence as God. The same personality as God. And yet he said, God, I surrender. I delight to do thy will. In the volume of thy book, it is written of me. In John chapter 9. John chapter 9, verse 4. I must walk the walls of him that sent me. His will was so surrendered in that of the Father that the work he said he was to do was not his own work, but the work of him that sent him. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. I must. It becomes imperative upon me to walk. Not my own, but the works of him that sent me. In Gethsemane, where he was praying, he said, Father, if thou wilt, let his cup pass over me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. There was nothing said there in that prayer. Father, if thou wilt. He didn't say, Father, I will. That this cup will pass over me. He said, Father, in the will, let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. The surrendered will. He surrendered himself to do the will of the Father. The Pharisees, the Jews, said terrible things about him. Even after he went away, he said terrible things about him. In some of their historical books, they called Jesus a son of a bastard. They said it was, it was an unknown soldier somewhere that met his meal. And they call him in their own books, the son of a bastard. And yet, he must surrender. Not as I will, but as I will. The time was coming for him to die. He said, Father, save me from this hour. And he must carry the cross. And he was going, 
Self may have thought, but he said, not as I will, but as I will. They laid him on the cross. They prostrated him there. His own creation took his hands. Put it on the plank. His, the one he created himself brought a man name. Put it there in so it was painful. And he nailed it there. And he said, Father, not as I will, but as I will. Until the young in. At that time, he would have thought he would complain, but he said, Father, not as I will, but as I will. I must still do your will here. Forgive me. For they know not what they do. Under pain, he must still do the works of his father. For he said, I must walk. The works of him that sent me. And on the cross, the thief said, Remember me when thou comest to thy kingdom. And Christ said, Today you will be with me in paradise. <laughs> was he complaining? Not as I will, but as thou will. He got himself down. Surrendered himself and said, I must do the work <coughs> of him that sent me. In John chapter 8. <coughs> Verse 26. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. He has no words of his own. I speak to the world those things I have heard of him. They understood not that to speak to them of the Father. Then said Jesus <coughs> unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing. I do nothing of myself. The surrender to me. That I do nothing. Nothing of myself. When I, when I pray for the sick, I was doing what the Father told me to do. When I preached the word, I was preaching at that time what the Father wanted me to preach on. When I went to the pool at Bethesda and healed just that man alone, I was doing the will of the Father. Why didn't I heal all the others who were there? I must do the will of him that sent me, but I can do nothing of myself. nothing of myself. But as my father has taught me, Jesus was taught, do you know? He said, he said his father taught me. Jesus sat down like you are now teaching, and I am not like you are now sitting, and the father taught him. The book of Isaiah says that Jesus himself said that you taught me and I was not rebellious to your word. Please surrender to me. But as my father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The father had not left me alone, for I do always. For I do always those things that please me. Please surrender to me. That is what you will get when you surrender your will to God. I do always. When I laugh, it was what was me and I was doing. When I'm sober, it was what was his will and doing what pleases him. If I frown at sin, it was what pleases him I'm doing. Whatever I do, 
all the time, every moment, I do always those things. But the Father who sent me, he gave me a commandment, Jesus. Was given a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Did he obey? He obeyed, told the people openly. But I'm not ashamed to tell you, I'm obeying my father's commandment. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the father said unto me, so I speak, his will was surrendered. And the question is, is your will surrendered? Don't answer, don't answer it, you will know in your attitude towards your fellow brother. The brother says, put this one here. Inside you, you are boiling. Inside you, you don't think you can control me like that. The wind is not the surrender. Somebody does something you want to strike back. That will is not yet surrender. Or God tells you to do something. And you must argue with God. That will is not yet surrender. I can remember some years ago in the campus, we were having Bible study. And his sister said that she is a stubborn child of God. <laughs> that was her testimony. A stubborn child of God. And she argues with God when she prays. God says it, he says no. <laughs> he said it clear in the open. I am. A stubborn child of God. What was she saying? I did not surrender my will to the Father. I still do what I want to do. I live the way I want to live. You know that my boss will talk about my things. My desires, what I like, what I don't like, my reputation. You know whether your will is surrendered or not. The question is is your will surrendered? And the great commandment is surrender your will. Which one will you do? The devil is looking for your will. Self is looking for the will. And God is looking for the will. It depends upon you where you place your will. But God says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And if you are wise, yield your will to the best group. Let us go. this morning and declare it to us that we must surrender our will. But we know how we have held too closely with our will. How we have struggled and struggled with you that we can't surrender it. You've spoken to us in many ways that we could surrender this will. 
And today again, you are saying, my son, give me thine heart. <laughs> we thank you for men who surrender their will. Abraham surrendered his will. That's why you told him to go to a land if you know you went out following. Moses surrendered his will. And the moment he wanted to go out of your will, he entered into trouble. And missed the promised land. 